At this point, let's look at solar. Solar power. As I told you, solar itself is sun. It means sun, just like lunar means moon. Solar energy has been there for many, many, many years. Our ancestors saw solar energy and they used it. They actually have been using solar. In fact, solar is perhaps the, the oldest form of energy that man ever used. Solar energy was used in those ancient early days to dry our clothes, to preserve our food by sun drying, to warm ourselves when we feel cold, even to warm our food. But in this tutorial and in this 21st century, we are more focused on how we can convert this power from the sun into electrical energy or into electricity. And for us to do that, we will need components. We don't just get, we don't just, you know, convert it into electricity just, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know like, like a magic. These are the components that we need. We need the PV modules or the solar panel. We will need the charge controller. We will need the battery. We will need inverters. We will need accessories. Once again, these are the components we need. We need the PV module. That's the solar panel. Then, as you can see from this illustration, we will need the charge controller. Then we will need the storage of the electricity. Then we will need the inverter. And then the accessories like the cable, the circuit breaker, you know, the trunking pipes and all that. And the meter, meter, metering system. So we need all the accessories. Once we put all these accessories together, then we have what we call a solar power system. I know you might be asking how all this works. But don't worry, we are going to it. I'm going to show you how all the component works but right now jot it down and understand that these are the components that we need to get a solar power system a usable solar power electricity for our home or office so let's proceed and look at how solar system work This is another illustration of what we just saw. The power from the sun is the source of the energy. It hits the solar panel. Then the charge controller is connected to the solar panel, then connected to the battery bank, then connected to the inverter. So the same thing here. So this is how it works in a very simple sentence. But we are going to look at it. Um, let's um, look at it deeper. I've already explained this to you that solar energy is simply energy provided by the sun. This energy is in the form of solar radiation, which makes the production of solar electricity possible. Electrical energy can be produced directly from the PV cells. The light hits the solar panels with photons. Photon is in in um, in physics, in in quantum physics, light can be viewed as a particle or as a wave. So if you view these sun rays as particles, you see them as particles of energy that falls or radiates from the sun. So these particles of energy is what we know as photons. Now these photons falls on this solar panel and the solar panel converts those photons into electrons of direct current. Current itself is flow of electrons. So this is um, a brief summary of 
how it works up to the stage of the solar panel. Now again, this flowing electrons itself is electricity, is current. It is this solar radiation that strikes out these electrons from the solar panel. In semiconductor physics, we call it a PN junction. This is this, this solar panel is made out of silicon, silicon crystals. So it's just like when you boil water and when the heat from the fire, and when the water absorbs the heat from the fire, the water molecules escape in the form of vapor. You know, it's just something like that, but not exactly. So in the same way, when the solar energy falls on this, it strikes out electrons, and the way the panel is configured, the electrons, positive and the negative side, the hole and the electron will flow into the charge controller. So you can see that this solar panel itself, on its own, can actually convert solar energy into electrical energy on its own. So other components is needed to regulate this electrical energy that comes from the sun. I hope you understand. So that is one of the advantage of learning online. You can pause at any time, you can rewind, you know, and you can also ask questions. If you are learning from stoplearn.com, you will see that there is a question box under each lesson. You can also put your comment anywhere, go to our website, YouTube page anywhere, we will answer your question. So now this electricity goes to charge controller. What is the work of this charge controller? The charge controller regulates the electricity from the panel to the batteries. Remember that the intensity of sunlight is not stable due to the movement of cloud and the time of the day. So it also means that the electricity generated by this panel will be proportional to this solar irradiation. Okay? That is when the sun increases, when the photons increases, there will be more energy, electrical energy here. So because this electrical energy is not stable, then you will need a charge controller. If without the charge controller, this electricity should go straight to your battery for storage. But then again, this battery bank may be damaged if you keep feeding it electricity, that is, if you keep charging it, you will need a kind of regulator to charge this battery. You don't just charge it directly. So this charge controller knows when the power from this panel is too high for the battery. The charge controller also knows when the battery is fully charged and it will cut off power from here. Or in some designs, it will transfer it straight to your home. Or straight to the inverter and to your home okay i hope it's clear at this point we'll still look at this charge controller in our subsequent lessons then we also have the battery bank the battery bank stores this electricity remember that sun or solar energy is only available during the day just about four hours or five hours during the day. What happens in the night? What happens when you come back from work and you want to watch a television, let's say around seven, around 10 p.m., then there will be no sunlight. This is where the battery comes in. The energy generated during the day can be stored in this battery bank, okay? So that in the night you can turn on your solar power system and tap the energy stored in the bank. Let me give you an illustration. Assuming you live in a rural community where you do not have access to water, you know, pipe born water, you can decide to buy yourself a tank so that when rain falls, the rain 
will be channeled into that tank or a water reservoir. And why do you do that? In your rural community, rain is perhaps the main or primary source of water for you. But you also need water when rain is not falling. So that tank or the water reservoir serves as your battery bank or your storage. So that when the rain is not falling, you will go there and turn on your pipe, your tap, which is like turning on the electrical switch to draw from the stored water. So this is what we do with solar, solar power system. The battery bank stores this energy so that when there is no sunlight, you can draw from it. Now, enough of it, we can still, we'll still go back to the data. We'll look at the inverter. What is the work of the inverter? Now, the electricity from your solar panel is in DC, that is direct current. So, this is the same electricity that you need to charge your battery. It's in 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts. Okay? That is DC. The energy, electricity you see from your batteries. But then the electricity you need for your home is AC. Alternating current. In 220 volts, 210 volts, 110 volts, depending on your country. So now... You will need the inverter to invert, that is to convert this electricity from the battery from only 12 volts or 24 volts to the 220 volts or 110 volts that you need for your home, for your wall socket. So most of our appliances cannot be powered by DC. Okay? Our TV, our fan, our air conditioner are all manufactured to be powered by alternating current AC. So it is the work of this inverter to invert or convert the current to AC for your home use. Okay? Um, before we proceed, I will also tell you that the inverter can also have an inbuilt charger. So that even when there is no sunlight, and you have light from the grid, which we call NEPA. The inverter is, can also have an inbuilt charger to also tap light from electricity from the grid and charge your battery. I will come to this later, but I just have to say it now so that you don't get confused as you proceed. So now we will look at the benefits of solar energy. What is the benefit of solar energy? So solar energy is sustainable, it's renewable from a natural source to generate electricity. Okay? The energy from the sun, if you if you are using firewood, for example, to cook, I want to explain what sustainable and renewable means. If you are using firewood, for example, to cook, it is your duty to go to the bush and cut sticks or the firewood and feed into the fire on a regular basis, okay? Once you stop doing this, there will be no fire for you to cook because that wood is the fuel. But then if you're using solar, you have to understand that you don't do any work. This sun is always there. It comes out about four or five hours every day. So the same solar that our ancestors saw 5,000 years ago is still the same solar, the same warmth, the same heat from the same sun that we are feeling today. So you see that this energy is inexhaustible, it's actually re renewable and non replenishing It requires little maintenance and the reason is because the solar panel itself do not have any moving parts. There is no moving parts, so there is... There is, there is a reduction in the wear and tear of the system. They are a silent producer of energy as it converts sunlight into usable electricity, which means, unlike your diesel generator that makes a whole lot of noise, solar is silent. Also, solar energy components are cost-effective. 
um some people may argue against this but on the long run you'll find out that the power that you generate from the sun is cheaper than from any other source or from most other sources so during operation solar electricity plants produce zero emission this is also an important part of it if you're using this generator for example it will emit carbon monoxide which is very poisonous to human and it also emit gases that is dangerous to our ozone layer but here solar electricity has zero emission zero emission the only emission is only when the panel is being produced but once you install it that's zero emissions so it's environmental friendly and it is clean this is what we mean when we say clean so i hope you are enjoying the lesson so far i hope you are following what i'm saying i've tried to put all this animation to make it a little bit um um will i say interactive you know so that you really understand everything the basics that you need to know about solar energy.